In the auto salvage industry, there are many different ways that salvage yards are run. Some are full service yards where they pull the parts for you, and there are some yards which are self-service where you can go and wrench the parts off yourself. There's a whole bunch of yards that are in between. But at the end of the day, with every recycling industry, there is some sort of waste. I run my yard a little different than most. I don't like to throw good parts away, but I am also limited by space and time and labor. There's lots of limitations to why I can't save all of the good stuff. But sometimes cars come in that are just, they just shouldn't die. And this is one of them. This, I can't believe I'm saying this, this was abandoned. This 2002 Silverado 1500 was abandoned at a gas station. There's a tow lot that I buy cars from that occasionally sells me vehicles. Now, they don't sell me everything and I don't buy everything because I don't have the space. But they kind of know what I like. And they told me, hey, I've got this green Silverado 1500 here. Here's the VIN. Let me know if you're interested. Yep, it's a Chevy truck. I buy tons of them. And then I saw it. It's just, would you look at it? Toll lots work different state to state. But in the state of Missouri, when a vehicle is abandoned, on a property owner or the city or whoever, wherever the vehicle is sitting, will call a tow company and say, hey, come sticker this vehicle. And now they'll come in apply some sticker like this it says vehicle removal notice here's the code you have five days to move your vehicle or it will be towed and that was the case with this it was stuck at a gas station no keys it was locked up somebody stole the radio out of it or pulled the radio out of it and it was thought to be abandoned and it sat for five days or however long until the tow company came and picked it up once the tow company has the vehicle they then send out certified letters to the previous registered owners whoever's name was on the title We'll get a notice that your vehicle is now at a tow lot. You owe for the tow and you owe for storage. Please come get your vehicle, essentially. After two attempts at this, 30 days apart, 60 days total, the tow lots will then apply for a salvage abandoned title and sell it off to usually salvage yards. Sometimes they'll go to the auction, but rarely do they make it back onto the street straight away because they're issued salvage titles. Now, in this case, this tow lot sells to a couple different people or salvage yards. I'm one of the couple people i guess i am technically a salvage yard and if i hadn't bought this it would have ended up at one of the two local chain yards which don't save any vehicles so if i hadn't bought this this would be scrapped now i get it this isn't everybody's cup of tea but look at it it's nice i mean it's pretty nice in the midwest these trucks without rust they just don't exist it just doesn't happen because we treat the roads with way too much rock salt and everything rusts out really bad. But this truck, this truck has rockers and cab corners and bedsides. But I digress. This has had cab corners and rockers replaced. There is some rust peeking through in places. There's a little bit of a bubble right here. It's certainly not a perfect specimen by any stretch. But it still looks good. And in a few minutes, we're going to find out if it drives good. Yeah, you can see some more rust repair there. The inner rockers are pretty rotted out. I've been underneath this truck. It's not great, but it still looks good. And it's nothing that's going to really affect how this thing drives. There are several reasons why people abandon vehicles. Sometimes stuff breaks down in places you can't get to them easily breaks down out of town, you get in an accident, it's not worth fixing, you don't want to pay for the tow bill, or maybe the car just simply isn't worth going and getting to retrieve. It's not really the right way to do things, but we do see that a lot. In this case, I had no idea why this thing was abandoned. None at all. Broke into it, realized there was no key. I uh, replaced the ignition tumbler with one with a key, and then put a battery in it. Yeah, it runs good, it runs fine. Yeah, I really don't know, I don't know. But I had an idea. Now, the first time I keyed this thing on, I was in for a pretty big surprise. It has 306,000, almost 307,000 miles on it. And it makes quite variable oil pressure. That's, that's a normal GM gauge thing. 
Uh, this thing. When I first got into this truck, I got the ignition replaced and I realized that it wouldn't start every single time. The more I started, the more I found the problem or a problem. Sometimes when, when you went to start it, it wouldn't start. It would crank and then it would almost fire when it came back to the on position, but it wouldn't. And after messing with it a little bit, I realized that the ignition switch was worn out. So when you go to start it, it would cut power to the engine control unit because there was a bridge between the on and start position and that contact was probably tired or it wasn't making good connection. Whatever is wrong with the switch, it was the ignition switch. A really simple, really cheap, really easy thing to replace. And now, it fires up every single time. Now I haven't really checked this truck out that well. Uh, I don't even know if the AC works. Well, the light comes on. I heard a compressor. It's getting cold. Ign ignition switch? I feel like there's more to this story. Now, I haven't driven this truck, uh, except for around the lot, and today we're gonna take it home. That's gonna be the real test. Now, I jammed a factory radio back in it from one of my other trucks that makes sound but doesn't really work. I just can't believe the AC works. I haven't checked things like the four wheel drive. Uh, okay, well the windows. That all works. I mean, this isn't half bad. I've got a, a mess to clean up. This thing's pretty dirty. I think this thing was smoked in. It smells not the greatest, but it, it's pretty clean, all things considered. I was poking around under here once I got it running. Just taking a look, see, I can tell you it's had its power steering lines replaced, it's had an alternator replaced. It's missing the bolt here. Oh, actually, it's just not in. Sweet. Well, that's an easy fix. I don't have to go track that down. It has AC Delco heater hoses, which most people just put regular heater hose on there. It's definitely had the quick disconnections replaced probably at least five times. It's pretty decent. I still feel like I'm missing something. I, I feel like there's something more to it that I'm just not seeing yet. Uh, power steering pump pulley is a little, it's fine. So I know some of you are saying, I don't think that's abandoned, something bad might've happened. And you, you could be right, but why would you take the radio? I also found this sub box. I haven't really gone through this truck that much. It's got a under seat sub box and the speakers are gone. I don't see an amp anywhere. It's like they took the valuable stuff. This truck also had no plates on it and a cold hammer. It's, it's blue. I mean, this, this was somebody's nice truck at some point. Owner's manual, window sticker. Ooh, this is, I've never had a window sticker with one of these trucks. This truck was almost $33,000. It's a pretty expensive truck back then. It says it can tow 6,400 pounds. Not with this transmission. 373, Federal Emissions, two-tone paint. Locking rear axle, nice. GT4, G80. All right, that's cool. It's. It's funny, I don't have window stickers for my expensive cars, but a couple hundred dollar, okay, maybe a little bit more than that, tow lot car, got the window sticker for that. There's also a pretty decent looking toolbox in the back. All a Mountain Dew can, American Honey, American Honey, American Honey. Well, we knew what this guy liked. Nope, come on now. Wow. That smells bad. Okay. Carbon and choke cleaner. Spray enamel. A murder weapon. A crate. Ooh, shredded ratchet straps. And a drill. It still works. That's probably the nicest tool I've found in one of these things. Well, I don't really like 
uh, these toolboxes very much. I'm going to remove this. Well, that doesn't weigh very much. Is there any good back there? Some boots. Uh-oh, what's going on here? What happened? Oh, I can't slide it straight out because of the way the bed is made. Listen, I want you to stay closed. Oh, there's a lot more American honey. Well, you just do what I... Why? Why are you doing this? Let's get a total count of this. One, One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight American honeys. That's a pretty good night. Oh, there's some spark plug wires with electrical tape. That's not how that works. All right, well, we're going to take this thing home. lights on. Never stopped anybody before. See what, he, see what I did there? All right, here we go. Still don't know if this thing has, you know, any extra neutrals. I'm just assuming that it has all four gears. There's first, second. Oh, I, I think I felt third. Here's the real test. First gear, second gear. Third gear. Do we have overdrive? Overdrive. It's got all the gears. A 4L60 that's not a 2L60. It's a springtime miracle. I don't hear any howling out of the rear end. Gauges are going crazy. Everything's good. Drive straight. I don't hear any noises. What happened with this truck? This thing's driving really nice. I was a little nervous about the transmission and the rear end. It's had a couple of messy shifts, but it is a 4L60. The 1 to 2 is fine, but the 2 to 3 is iffy. The things you do without a radio, it stopped working. It's fine. I'm not even going to mess with it again. It's been great. It drives great. All the gauges look fine. I mean, the oil pressure gauge is kind of all over the place, but it's a GM from the 90s or early 2000s. It's what they do. It's got all its gears. About a mile away, two miles away from home. I made the journey just fine. Well, I made it home. Check engine lights on now. Uh, it's got a couple suspension creaks and noises. I'm gonna drive it around a little bit. I think we're gonna change the wheels, take it back to the shop. This isn't bad, not at all. There's this old adage that I've heard a few times. And it's something along the lines of, Chrome brings them home. I don't know how true that actually is, but I do know that I am not a huge fan of these wheels. I think they are decent looking wheels. I just don't think they suit the truck very well. I'd like to get something closer towards factory. I, I know that might be a little boring, but I think I can sell these wheels for close to what I paid for the entire truck. And then, I have the truck looking more like I'd like it. So I do have a set of the 17 inch wheels off of the 2005 to 2007 Silverado. They're not my favorite by any stretch, but they were here. 
So that was easy. And what I'd really like to find would be the factory 16s, but I don't have a set. So now we're going to knock these wheels off, put the other wheels on, and hopefully I don't find anything wrong when I get these wheels off. Well, I'll be in here eventually, but I really just want to swap wheels and tires today. You know how I know this is a good truck? The tailgate handle still works. I know the bezel's gone, but that's normal. But the tailgate handle still works. It did work. I, that's how... Okay, well... We'll just add that to the list. Not only does it look better than I expected, it drives better too. The wheel and tire combo that was on this truck before is from a newer Avalanche, has a larger overall diameter and a different offset. And when I installed these wheels and tires, it corrected a few problems. The speedometer is now right on the money. I hate that saying so much. It also doesn't rub at full lock. The tires would scrub at full lock, whereas they don't anymore. I think the offset and overall diameter fixed that as well. And it seems to accelerate a little bit better as well. And it rides well. It's, everything's better. It's just better. I know some people may not like the look of the factory wheel, and I would have preferred to use the 16-inch wheels that came would have come with this truck. These are 17-inch wheels, so in 9904, the half-ton trucks had disc brakes in the back, smaller front brakes. In 2005, they got drums in the back and larger front brakes to ca compensate, I suppose. And then they went to a 17-inch wheel to clear those brakes. So these are off of a 2005 to 2007 Silverado half-ton. I think I had a Z71 L33 truck. I've had these at my shop for a year. Nobody really wanted to buy them. So I figured I might as well use them on the truck. Getting down to tin tax. I paid $700 for this truck, which in today's market seems completely ludicrous. But if you look at the situation where this truck was, this was at a tow lot, it has been abandoned for months. I have no keys, no idea if it runs or drives, no idea of its overall condition. All I know is here's the VIN number, here's the price, $700 has a salvage title, do you want it or not? So I look at the one picture they sent me of the truck. I decode the VIN number to figure out how many options a truck has, what options a truck does have, about how many miles a truck might have, although the Carfax didn't really have a lot of info on his truck. And I can assume that two out of the three drivetrain components will be in sellable condition. Either the engine, transmission, sometimes transfer case, front diff, if it's four wheel drive, the rear end, I know where the money lies on these trucks because I've had over a hundred of them through for parts trucks. And I take the risk. For $700, it's really hard to go wrong on a Chevy truck from this era. It's, it's really tough. So I agree to it. It gets delivered. And yeah, I'm glad I did. I, I mean, this is the exception. I, I will be completely honest. This doesn't usually happen. Usually it's much worse than I expect. And I still do okay on it but it's it's not this this is definitely not the norm and in fact i've done even better on this truck because i sold the sub box that was underneath the rear seat on facebook marketplace for 60 bucks and then i sold the wheels and tires off this truck for 650 dollars it cost me about 50 dollars for inspections and forms and title work to get the title turned from salvage into prior salvage or rebuilt which it currently has so i'm i'm 40 bucks in this truck which is ridiculous now i i don't really know what i'm going to do with it because i don't need it i have another half ton truck which i much rather have it's two-wheel drive and it i don't really want to tow with it i like my three-quarter ton that i'm building now so i don't know if i'll keep it as a backup truck or if i'll sell it maybe i'll trade it off but it definitely needs some repair it's got 300,000 miles on it and None of them are perfect at 300,000 miles. So we've got an ABS light on, the check engine light has now turned on, it makes some 
knocking noises in the front we'll have to figure out it's going to need some investment which is fine I, i've got 40 bucks in the truck so i'll put a few hundred dollars in parts in the truck we'll see how nice we can make it on a budget and then we'll figure out the overall idea and plan of this truck because this is going to make somebody a good truck and it's just it's too good i can't this would have been scrapped it's it's crazy now, this is not going to be a series of videos. I have no intent on drawing this out as long as possible. I think there will be one more video on this truck, and it's going to be fixing and diagnosing everything that's wrong with the truck. That's, that's the current plan. I don't know how long it'll be till that video comes out. I've already got some of it filmed, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I really want to shed some light on the other side of the industry. I know you guys see me tear down motors all the time. It's not all I do. I do a lot more than that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you look forward to the next one. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.